Hey guys, welcome to another Trade Genius Podcast. Bob and Phil here as always. So I'm not sure if you guys have been noticing, but they've been floating the idea of banning short selling. And if you don't know what short selling is, we're going to get into that in this video. We're also going to get into why banning short selling might not be as bullish as it might sound. So let's dive into this video and check it out. Trade Genius. Hey guys, really briefly before we jump into this video, appreciate all the likes and subscribes. And if you can ring that notification button, that really helps us out. In addition to that, if you guys don't mind, head over to tradegenius.co, check out our specials we have over there. There's a number of different specials with different packages for all different experience types. If you're more into education, we have a package for that. If you'd just like to get into the room, primarily, we have a package for that as well, where you can see where we're calling out trades and things like that live, and also posting signals into our Discord signal rooms. So check it out, tradegenius.co. Appreciate you doing that. So Bob, if they ban short selling, right? The short sellers are evil. This market's gonna just go up then, right? Yeah, I mean, that's their theory. And so, you know, what people need to understand what short selling is, is that, you know, everybody understands going long a stock, which means that you put cash in, you get the stock. But short selling is that when you have your uh, shares with a broker, they're allowed to lend your shares out uh, for a fee. And so you'll have people saying, I want to, I'm betting against the stock. So I'm going to short a stock from that inventory. And then Mr. Broker, I'll pay you back that stock at a cheaper price. And I'm going to, I'm going to keep the difference less the, the interest that they're going to charge you for shorting it. But if you're wrong, then you have to pay that stock back. Plus, you have to pay the premium that you you missed out on. And so what's been happening here with the regional banks is that uh, investor traders have, have obviously been correct that the regional banks are collapsing. So everybody's shorting the stock. And if they're not letting go of the shorts because they feel very, very strongly, Phil, that a lot of these companies are going to be taken over in receivership. So there's no reason to, you know, you're going to be able to uh, make even more money is that it's starting to frustrate uh, the banking community and they like to punish people you know they do it all the time in the stock market to people but these guys are persistent and it's probably big money so Jamie Dimon starting to float this and he said it not once but he said it a couple times that he wants to ban short selling on banks now what happens when you when you ban short selling on banks is that the banks themselves will then uh, get, get a short-term pop but then there's really nobody to cover it when people just start selling the shares because they just don't want them anymore so you get actually an accelerated decline afterwards because you have nobody there that has to cover or pick up their profit from shorting it. So you don't get that wave, you know, that kind of wave thing that they do when you uh, when you see stock trading, you'll just start seeing waterfalls. And then also transfers a lot of risk to the ETFs because the banks are all sitting on ETFs. So what people will do is that instead of shorting the banks, they'll just short the ETFs. And then when you short the ETFs, the ETFs go down. Guess what? The ETFs have to sell the banks. <laughs> so lo and behold, uh, short, long story short here, this is what they did in 2008. And here's the result. You want to throw that chart up? Okay. This is when the waterfall happened, Phil. Do you see that spike that you that you circled? Obviously yep. you do because you circled it. Is <laughs> that that's the day they punished. They punished the uh, short sellers. And everybody said, that's it. Everything's good. Selling's over. These damn evil manipulators leaders are out of the market and then for the next four months we drop 48 percent because there were people like saying if i can't short it to protect myself i'm just getting out of it right or i'm going to start shorting the indexes and i'm going to i'm going to get my pound of flesh that way and that's the same thing that'll happen here and i don't know i i don't get these people i guess they have short termism you know because they're like okay if i get, get this short ban in i can at least get out of positions that i'm in and who cares what happens to these people afterwards but this is what it's going to look like when that happens and guarantee you people are so financially illiterate and short-term thinking that they'll push for something like this but when you guys see this if your traders rejoice because you're going to be able to make a lot of money over the next couple of months. I mean, literally, the day he announces the short sell ban, you start selling or buying puts out on indexes 
over the next couple of days and out a month or two, and you'll be able to retire because this market <laughs> will absolutely crater. Well, and, and, and that's the thing too, right, Bob? Um, they're doing this because really this kind of affects retail only because savvy institutional investors can still hedge. They're called puts, like you said. And so just because you can't uh, short a stock outright, you certainly can buy puts, or in this case, you'd probably be better off just buying puts on the indices like the uh, SPX, right? Or the Dow Jones Industrials, whatever. Or NQs probably would be more beneficial for that because those tend to get very um, volatile on a drop as well. Probably get more bang for your buck shorting the Qs. But that's the thing is that, like you said, the mechanism there is like, okay, well, we can't short it. So let's just get out and sell it because a lot of retail isn't savvy to options. I think um, that's, you know, especially because we see it, you know, when the, when people come into the rooms, you know, nobody usually has much experience with options, but they do get the concept of being short of stock. And so I think that's the problem. And I think they do it on purpose, Bob, in these cycles, like it was almost every single cycle cycle you get this oh let's ban short selling and in reality i think it's just them actually trying to fuel the move down find the final move down they're already hedged these guys have puts on jp morgan has puts on the market they're hedged and they actually make a lot of money in these situations so i think it's all coordinated bob and it, it sounds bullish and it, it probably gets a lot of the retail customers sucked into the market because they think oh that's probably bullish right just like the debt ceiling getting resolved oh that's probably bullish not realizing that the market dynamics actually have a negative negative uh, liquidity flow to it. And so I just think, you know, it, it just uninformed retail, uh, once again, being used as exit liquidity, Bob. Yeah. And look, I mean, the worst thing that you could do in trading is to watch the news. OK, you know, we're here to interpret it for you because, you know, we, we see the opposite effect they try to do here. Remember, market makers can still short in a short sell band. They're not subject to this rule because if somebody writes puts, they have to short it to, uh, you know, to maintain balance or the option markets collapse. And I guarantee you, you know, BlackRock and those guys are not going to, you know, Citadel are not going to allow you to shut off option trading for these guys. And what happens is the put premiums then will blow out. I think what Jamie Dimon's doing here, I think he's trying to throw a few pitches to brush the batter off the plate. Yeah. You know, to, to try to push these things back, scare them off a little bit. You know, for them, for those guys to be able to short at a, at a, at a better premium or the buy puts at a, at a better price. So, but at some point, you know, if they get that worried, remember Janet Yellen's meeting with the regional bankers next week. And that might be one of the crazy things they come up with because that lady, she could turn gold into lead like nobody's tomorrow. So <laughs> uh, keep an eye on this thing next week. <laughs> yeah, I agree. If you want to hear or you're going to want to know what's going to happen next, do the opposite of whatever she says or predicts right <laughs> oh my gosh she, she's she's a piece of work but anyway you know if you could trade her we love her her and kramer and you know there's people like that are just so consistently wrong or yeah they're consistently wrong for a reason but as long as you as long as they're consistent you can make money off of them i don't That's care if right. they're consistently wrong or consistently right you know then you know how to trade them and uh, she's one of those man whatever she touches you know so get ready for this it's coming because these people are just really 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 um they just don't care about you 100 percent. all right guys if you guys were around during this short sale ban last time in 2008 let us know you know how you did then or what you did we'd, we'd love to hear from you in the comments below otherwise we're going to see you on monday with the next video and we're going to talk about some miners bitcoin miners as you guys requested we'll get into that as well other than that have a great weekend bob thanks a lot and we'll see you guys on the next video take care Trade genius.